Hi, this is Steven Estelle, the application engineer with Rapid Scan 3D, and today we're going to show you the Geomagic Wrap software. And right now we're about to import an STL of a small sofa that's located inside of our office, and we're going to utilize the software and show you some of the features. So the first feature we're going to show you is a mesh doctor. So when you first import an STL into the software, it's going to ask you, do you want to run mesh doctor? And typically I always choose yes, and that hit apply. And then it runs through all the different analysis and it fixes any problems that it sees in your STL. So on the model, everything highlighted in red are all the problems that the software located. And in the analysis box, you can see the numbers of problems and the different kinds of problems that the software found. For example, self intersections and spikes and highly creased edges. So depending on the size of the file that you're importing, this may take a while, as well as how many numbers of errors you have. Now, even though it may take a little bit of time, the problems typically always get solved. So in this example, during the first run, 15 spikes were able to come through without being fixed. So if you hit apply one more time, It'll run through it one more time and finalize every single problem so that the analysis shows zero all the way through. Once you fix that, you hit OK, and now you have a nice STL that's been imported correctly without any errors. So the next thing we're going to do is trim off some of the bottom of our small sofa here. And we're going to use a plane, and we're going to define the plane by three points. So you can utilize this feature to take off parts of your STL that you imported that you may not need or want. So we're going to select the points and click Align. And we want to make sure that we have it exactly positioned where we want. Once you get your plane located in the, in the nice spot that you want, you can change the position and you can move it up and down however you like. Under the operations, you hit intersect plane and you're able to choose which side of the model you want. The blue is the part that's going to stay and the red, when you hit delete selection, goes away. And then once you hit close intersection, it will box off the opening that you left open when you trimmed away that part. So now that we've trimmed away the part that we don't want and closed off that opening hole, we're going to go on to our next feature. And the next feature that we're going to show you is in the analysis part of the software. So under the analysis, we're going to first show you how you can measure the distance between different spots on the couch for this example. So we're taking the two points on the left and right side of the arms, and we're able to pull up the distance in millimeters. So we show that we have pretty much 1,112.427 millimeters, as well as you can do an on-surface projection so that the line runs across the entire surface of the imported model. You can see that the number changes when we click the box. You can see the dotted line that represents the distance. So as you can see, the points that were represented in the measuring tool actually closely represent the measuring tape that we pulled up. The millimeters that we acquired from the software actually come out to be close to 43 inches. And that's demonstrated shown in the Google Translate of the units, as well as the measurement on the measuring tape. So now also on the analysis, you're able to do volume. So you're able to create the, or view the volume of the model, you're able to com compute the center of gravity. You can create a point where the center of gravity is located. The point in this example is located inside of the model. So if the model is actually hollow, you'll be able to see a green dot to represent where the center of gravity would be located. We're just going to delete that and carry on to our next feature. Also in compute, you can compute the area. So you're able to just do the surface area. Just hit apply and you get the surface area in millimeters squared. Or you can do a cross-sectional area from a plane that you create. 
So for this example, it shows the surface area or the cross-sectional area of the three different spots on the left side of the plane. However, you could draw your own plane and then apply it again and get a cross-sectional area that way. It's quite useful because this allows you to get the cross-sectional area that you desire. They all show up in the results section on the left side of the screen. And then what's really good about it is that you can export these results and you can save the type as like an S, as a .txt file. Once you're done with that, you hit OK and you can go on to the next feature in the analysis part. And we're going to show you the selection through object. So in the selection through object, it pretty much pulls up a cross-sectional view of your imported model. So once you draw your plane that you want a cross-section of, you hit compute. And in this example, it shows a cross-section of the armrest and the cushion that you sit on. You can hit next to get a different view, so you have more than one. And this time we're going to do a cross-section of view from the top to the bottom of the chair. Hit compute, and there's another cross-section of view of the same chair. So once we hit OK, you can view all the different views in the tree on the left side of the screen. Now if you go into the 2D dimensions, what you can do is you could take that cross section and you can start pulling off measurements from there. For example, you could draw a line for the top of a cross section and the, and the bottom of the cross section. And you can pull off the distance that comes in between those. Remember, our units are in millimeters. Another thing that you could do is pull off an angle from the cross section of you. So the line that you draw creates a best fit line, and then you can pull an angle between those two lines. You can hit next to go into the next cross-sectional view, and you, or you can just hit OK and go back. And when you, collect, when you select on the view, your measurements are still there, as well as when you select on your imported file, you can see where the cross-sectional views intersect the 3D model, as well as the measurements are still there. So after we're going to remove those different measurements, we're going to show you some features, how you can import different planes and shapes from your model. So for this example, we're going to show you a plane that's going to be created from the best fit, which is pretty much just selecting a surface area of the model. And when you apply, it creates a best fit plane from that area you selected. And then you get a featured plane from that. Another option for creating a plane is by selecting three dots on top of your model, and that also creates another plane. What you can also do is you can create an offset of that plane. You can do it positive or negative, and then you hit apply, and it updates. You hit OK, and you have a second plane in your feature street. Another good example is creating a shape. So we're going to do a best fit and create a cylinder from the head of the small sofa. So we're going to highlight the area that we want it to best fit, and we're going to highlight the back of that same area that we want it to best fit as well. So everything highlighted in red is what's going to be best fitted to create the cylinder. We're going to hit apply, and we're going to get a basic shape from the highlighted area that we selected. And as you can see, a cylinder was created, and it shows up in our feature tree. And what you can do with these features is that you can export these. If you right click the feature and hit export, you can save the type as a bunch of different file types such as .igis or .step. So we're now going to delete these features and we're going to show you the curves and the curve features that this software has. It's pretty impressive because you're able to extract pretty exact curves from your models. So you're going to have to mess around with the curvature sensitivity as well as some of the separator sensitivities. And when you hit compute, it's going to calculate with these sensitivities where a curved line best fits the model. So wherever you see a red line, that is where a curved line is going to be created. 
and all the other colors are the different sections of the model. So we're going to hit OK, and then it says contour lines weren't extracted. Do you want to extract now? And we hit OK. And then the contour lines are being extracted right now. So now you can see the lines are actually on top of our model that we imported. Now what you're able to do is you can take these lines and you can actually edit them if you want. You can drag the lines onto the different parts of the surface of the model. Or you can draw on top and add more lines. You could take away some of the lines, delete them. However you want to, you can edit all these lines. The red dots are the points of intersection between more than two lines. The yellow dots are pretty much a continuous line. And you don't see any in this video, but there will be a green dot, which demonstrates an open end or the end of a line. So you can do things such as split and merge the lines or make them more relaxed, or you can edit them, add more lines. So now what we're going to do is we're going to convert those lines into free curves. And when we hit OK, this pretty much makes a wireframe of our couch. And this could actually be pretty useful if you're doing things such as creating a cover for some kind of model that you have. And you can use, utilize the wireframe as the, as the uh, outline of the cover for your model. So as you can see, based off of the curve, you can perfectly see the outline of the couch. So after we delete the lines and the curve that we created, we're going to show you the exact surfacing. Now under the exact surfacing, Geometric Wrap tries to perfect the surfacing of the model that was imported into the software. So you do the exact surfacing, and then after you do that, you click on the auto surface. We're going to mark this as an organic object and hit apply. Now typically this is going to take a while. The process takes about five to 10 minutes. It matters how big your surface model is. And what it's doing right now is trying to create the best fit mapping or wrap to create the best surface model for the model that was imported into the software. So right now it's on phase three of 10. And it has to go through all 10 phases to complete the model. And during these phases, it's gonna ask you if you wanna fix some things manually or automatically. It'll say, do you want to fix this manually? And typically I click no, so that it's done automatically. And it'll ask you this twice during this process. So here's the first pop-up that says, do you want to repair these problems manually? I typically click no, so that it's done automatically. It's going to run through the last two phases, and there'll be a second window that'll pop up asking for a similar response. So here's the second pop-up window. What it shows is that you want to repair the problems manually. And we're going to hit no one more time. And then from there, we want it to be done automatically. We have a nice surface on top of this couch, the small sofa that we had in our office. So we're going to hit OK and exit that. And now what we're going to be able to do is a deviation of the surface model versus the original import. So under the analysis, we're going to hit the deviation, and it gives you a very basic deviation report. The deviations between the original model versus the surface that was taken. So as you can see, a majority of the surface is actually within the 0.2216 range in deviation. A lot of the creases and some of the parts on the side range even higher or lower. But as you can see, a majority of the small sofa is within the green region. So Geometric Wrap is capable of doing a very basic deviation analysis on your scan data that you imported and the surface that you create with the software. It has nowhere near the capability of the Geometric Control X but it gives you a very basic understanding of the deviation analysis.
So after all that, you can save your surface model. And you can save it as allow the files such as STL, a .stp, or a .igis. And you can save it as any of these types of files and then you can import them into the different software that you utilize. So it allows Geomagic Wrap to be utilized for a bunch of different softwares that many people use. So that's the basics of the features that Geomagic Wrap utilizes. This is Steven Estelle, the Applications Engineer with Rapid Scan 3D. If you have any further questions or do you want any answers, feel free to contact us at any time. Thank you and hope to hear from you soon.